Good morning. This is Swift Passage. Thanks for all you viewers locally and around the globe. I give God all the praise and glory on this channel. This is God's holy channel. This is God's holy channel. Um, first of all, I wanted to speak a, a minute about uh, what happened to me yesterday on social media. I posted a, a salvation prayer on a channel that had many subscribers. I was attacked brutally, viciously on that channel, and um, there were some things that were, were that were said that were so disturbing. And um, I couldn't believe it. And so um, I thought about it all night. And then I felt led by the Spirit to speak about some things that are going on. About the harlot spirit of revelation. First of all, in John, King James Version Bible, John chapter 8 verse 7. Jesus says, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Uh, he that is without sin casts a first stone. So this one person attacked me, and I felt uh, like I, I felt led to go look at their um, subscriber um, subscriptions and saw that. Um, this person was subscribed to online porn and all this different stuff, but was but was casting the first stone at me. And so I was led to that verse this morning and to speak about the harlot spirit because many lies are going around social media about me in this ministry. 1 Timothy 4, verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, I'm a work, I'm a work in progress like um, all Christians are, true Christians. None are without sin. No one is without sin. We're all in a work in progress. And we're all... He's all he's working on all of us to clean up clean clean us up for redemption day. And here's the thing is um I'm not ever claiming I'm a perfect human being. I make mistakes. Um I ask the Lord for forgiveness. I go on living. I do my best to be holy and righteous in, in the eyes of the Lord. I do my best. But there are many things going on, many lies of the harlot that are going around, not just on me, but many people that are that believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. What is a harlot? The harlot is sometimes thought of as being a specific church or organization. And many people have accused a group or that group of being the harlot. But in reality, the harlot is a spirit that pervades many different churches, denominations, and even individuals. In James 4 verse 4, we can get a clear picture of what spiritual harlotry looks like to God. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. There is no in-between. Either you align yourself with God or with the world. Anything else is considered adultery in God's eyes. But this is exactly what the harlot spirit tries to do. She tries to mix God with the world and to offer the best of both worlds. The entirety of the harlot's gospel is 
the preaching that you can have both the world and God. She uses God's word and quotes many verses and expressions that sound very good and godly. But underneath all of that glitter gold, there is a murky current of self selfishness and pride. The most dangerous part about the harlot is that she can very, be very hard to recognize. She presents her wine in a golden cup, which is in Revelation 17, verse 4, which is the word of God. All the words and phrases and doctrines she preaches look godly because she uses Bible verses to support her lies. This is a common trick of Satan and his servants. Also in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. Her gospel sounds great at first and makes people feel good and warm. She presents all the rewards of a godly life and takes away the conditions. This is how the harlot manages to deceive people and a great many people have fallen under the influence of the harlot. If you are, are, if you are not exceedingly vigilant, then you cannot always separate her lies from the truth. The harlot's twisted preaching is the wine of her fornication in Revelation 17 verse 2. And like wine, it is easy to get drunk off the good feelings that the harlot's preaching gives. In the end, though, her preaching never leads to a true life with Christ in victory over sin, which is also in 1 Peter 4 verse 1. This is in strong contrast to the pure water of life that Jesus preached. John 7 verse 38 and 39. The harlot spirit is active in many ways on the earth, both on an individual level and on a broader scale. On an individual level, she tries to influence people to live as close to the world as they can, to declare themselves as Christians, but at the same time live accordingly to worldly or purely human values, whether that is living according to their own lusts, sinning a little on the sidelines, enjoying this world's pleasures or following some set of strict rules or code of ethics, this is not of God. On a broader scale, the harlot spirit is also active in churches around the world, working to warp the pure teachings of God and move entire churches and denominations away from the truth and into the darkness of her lies. The harlot's goal is not to tear down Christianity and religion altogether. On the contrary, she loves churches. The harlot is Satan's way of burying a needle in a haystack. It becomes harder for people to recognize true living Christianity when it is surrounded by so many half-truths and pretty words. This is why... The harlot is not manifest in just one church, but she reaches out to many. The more splits and denominations she can create, the harder it is to find the true church. To create division and strife is her greatest goal. Satan knows that he cannot convince everyone to just abandon God altogether and become atheists, at least not right away. So he directed his servant, the harlot, to solely corrupt them away from the pure truth of God's word and to turn them to the world. Um, you can uh, uh, go into the book of Revelation, read about the harlot. You can also do research on the, on the harlot. This is happening uh, like crazy now. And this will continue to, to cause strife and division among the body of Christ, the true bride of Christ, until the trumpet sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I pray for all those who are um, spreading lies about this ministry and other things that are going on to other true ministries on YouTube. 
Um, God knows all and sees all and will um, work accordingly unless you repent and ask the Lord for forgiveness and stop what you are doing. Jesus sees all. Jesus sees all. There's nothing that's not revealed to him. He sees all. I love you all. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, Lord willing, I will put up another video that the Lord leads me to put up. Um, pray for me. I, I need your prayers. Um, there is many, uh, I believe, family members that are spreading lies about me all over the place. Uh, and, and the Lord is sharing with me that this is jealousy, um, strife, and envy. And I, I'm just, at this point, I'm waiting on the Lord to come and take me home. I've really had enough of it here. Um, I'm tired of so many Christians, supposed Christians, turning away from the truth and falling to the lies of the enemy, Satan, and his lies. And turning away from the truth and the, and the word of God. Get into the your the word of God, the Bible, the King James Version Bible I read. Get into the word of God. Um, stay in prayer. Um, it's going to get bumpy in the coming days here. And I believe the Lord will come for the true believers. God bless you all. Shalom.